I'm going to discuss our third affine transform, the third primitive affine transform, and this is called reindexing. And here is an example to show the third primitive affine transform. So let's say I have for i equals zero to n, y i plus plus y i equals z i, and this forms my statement s one, and x i equals y i minus one. So if I was to draw the dependency, the iteration space, and the dependency edges, then basically uh, I have this. Uh, I have this brown line that indicates the progression of the loop iterations, and for each iteration point, I have two statements: uh, by S1 uh, denoted by the circle, and S2 denoted by the cross. And so we, I have multiple instances of S1 and multiple instances of S2. And in this case, there is a dependency from uh, y0 to y0. Uh, in other words. The zeroth iteration of S1 has a dependency on the first iteration of S2 because that's when both of them access y0. So I draw an edge from the zeroth iteration of S1 to the first iteration of S2. Similarly, I can draw an edge from the first iteration of S1 to the second iteration of S2, and so on. And so this becomes my depend uh, my iteration space with dependency edges, pictorially speaking. If I was to basically say the same thing using Constraints, space partitioning constraints. I would have to say that whenever there is a data dependence, so in other words, whenever i1 for s1 equals i2 for s2 minus 1, then p of i1 must be equal to p of i2. In other words, then both i iterations i1 and i2 must map to the same processor id p. And this basically, when I solve these constraints, these space partitioning constraints, I get p equals i for s1. And p equals i minus one for S two, and so basically this circle and this cross must be uh, allocated to the same processor. And this is, you know, pictorially speaking, this makes sense. So any all these chains should be present in the same processor. The rank, the max, ra the rank of the solution of the uh, mapping function is basically one, which is equal to the rank of the iteration space as well. So, so we are we are good on that part, and we have found the maximum rank solution. And now we are going to do the code generation. So, this is another example, small example of a space partitioning constraint uh, problem uh, that solves this kind of example and that constructs an affine transform that that which we are going to call indexing. So, let's see how the code generated code would look like for this solution to the space partitioning constraints. And here is the generated code, my simple code generator. I basically have my outer loop on P, which is the processor space. The lower bound of the processor space is minus one because that's the lowest value that P can take. The lowest value that I can take is zero. And because for S2, I have P equals I minus one, the lowest value for P that uh, this outer loop can take is minus one. The largest value that P can take is N because that's coming from P equals I because I can take N as the largest value. So P can also take N as the largest value and then P plus plus. And then I just paste the original program as the body of this loop, except that I predicate each, uh, each statement with if P equals the corresponding function. So in this case, it becomes if P, this, if P equals I, only then execute XI equals Y, y i equals zi if p equals i minus 1 only then execute xi equals y i minus 1 so this is my simple code generator and now i'm going to tighten the code so my first attempt at tightening the code is just that i basically tighten the loop iteration indices of i and so what i get is i equals maximum of 0 comma p because you know p is already known so either i is going to be equal to p or i is going to be equal to p plus 1 and from that I say that i is greater than or equal to p and i is less than or equal to p plus 1. And so that I basically change my loop iteration bounds for the inner loop on i from 0 to n to max of 0 comma p to min of p plus 1 comma n. And notice when I write it like this, the inner loop can have at most two iterations. Start at p and end at p plus 1. And at min it can have one iteration. And so this is my uh, code gener generated code with tightened loops. It is almost perfect, except that we have this for loop and then we have these extra tests and we can eliminate these extra tests by specializing the code by potentially duplicating the statements code. And so that's what we're going to do at the very end. And I basically find the iterations uh, 
uh, I try to partition the iteration space of the outermost loop, which is P. And there are three different partitions that I create. One is minus the singleton point minus one, for which only S2 would execute. Then we have the points from zero to N minus one, where both S1 and S2 would execute. And then I have the singleton point N comma N, which basically only S1 executes. And then specializing the code for each of these three partitions, for minus one comma minus one, I only execute X, S1, S2. And so this is the code that I get. If N is greater than or equal to zero, X1 equals Y zero. How do I get N is greater than zero? Well, if I just use, uh, you know, if I just say that uh, P should iterate from minus one to minus one. And then when I uh, try to identify the condition for the inner loop, I basically get that the inner loop will execute either zero or one iterations. And the condition for it to execute one iteration of S S2 would be if N was greater than or equal to zero. All right. And then I also notice that for I substitute for P equals minus one in this statement of S2, XI equals XI, uh, YI minus one. And that basically gives me X1 equals Y0. Okay, uh, you know, because you know, the I that we get would be equal to P plus one or something like that. And so that if you, if you work this out, we're going to get y, X1 equals Y0. Okay, now we're going to look at the, then we're going to have the second partition from zero to N minus one. And here we basically iterate from P equals zero to N minus one, P plus plus. And we just paste the original code because both the iteration, uh, both the uh, uh, statements will execute. We just paste the uh, statements without actually doing the test, the predicate test, and say y i y p equals z p because p equals i and y i equals z i. So I can just say p z y p equals z p. And then if p equals i minus one, y, x i equals y i minus one, and this translates to x p plus one equals y p. Okay, because uh, you know i becomes p plus one. So I just substitute i for p plus one and I get x of p plus one equals y p. And finally, I have the third partition where I say if n is greater than or equal to zero, y n equals z n. Once again, the if n is greater than or equal to zero is the simplified form of the fact that p is equal to n, p is equal to n. And it's the S1 statement that executes in this case, which just which is y i equals z i. And because p was equal to n and i was equal to p, I can just replace that with y n equals z n. Uh, I want to make a correction. It should be probably x 0 equals y minus 1, one here. Right? So this should have been x 0 equals y minus 1. This would have been the right boundary condition at the entry of the loop. OK. Uh, let me also fix this here. And if I look at it, uh, you know, pictorially, then this was my original iteration space. Let's say this is iteration i equals zero. So I have x and z, uh, s2 and s1, but I have these diagonal uh, lines of iterations. So first I'm going to execute s1, then s2 of the first point, then s1 and s2 of the second point, then s1 and s2 of the third point, and so on. But there is a the reuse distance between uh, the access to the same element is actually larger here because I have to you know I do lexicographically I do the uh, S1 first then S2 then I do S1 and then finally I do the reused iteration with reindexing I have basically changed this uh, iteration space so that I first execute the zeroth iteration of S2 then I execute the zeroth iteration of S1. Then I execute the first iteration of S2. Then I execute the first iteration of S1 and so on. And now the dependency edges are basically just straight lines, straight vertical lines. And that basically decreases my reuse distance between data dependencies. And this transformation is exactly uh, represented by this particular program. And its iteration space is represented pictorially here. And we also call this the affine, primitive affine transform number three uh, called reindexing. 